Welcome back to Comic Book Historians. I'm Alex Grand. Go ahead and click on that ruby red subscribe button down below. Now, how about some hyperbole? June Tarpe Mills, 1941 Miss Fury, is the amazing Spider-Man of her time. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking maybe. Now, June Tarpe Mills is a fashion illustrator who was the first female creator of her time to produce a costumed superhero female. This was actually six months before Wonder Woman was presented out on the scene. June Tarpe Mills wrote, penciled, and inked The Adventures of Miss Fury, who donned a Catwoman-type suit before Catwoman even had this type of suit, and first appeared in the Sunday strip format originally as Black Fury, then some months later as what we know today as Miss Fury. Now this newspaper comic strip had so much color, fun, action, and awesome dialogue that it caught the attention of publisher Martin Goodman and editor-in-chief Stan Lee, so much so that they ran this strip as a reprint comic book from 1942 to 1946 for their Timely Comics, which was later known as Marvel Comics. The covers to both Timely's Miss Fury and Marvel's Amazing Fantasy 15 start off similar with skin-tight heroes swinging through the city facing off against villains, but the comparisons don't stop there. The internal dialogue, plotting, and continuous storyline do read similarly to one another, as Miss Fury reads more advanced than other Golden Age comic books at the time, likely due to its more sophisticated newspaper comic strip origins. Not to say there was a gap of the following awesome attributes in this comic book compared to other comic books leading up to Spider-Man, but a lot of the comic books lacked all of the qualities that we're about to go over. The dialogue is full and rich with a particular type of plotting that would make Marvel famous many decades later. For example, self-doubt in the hero, a certain neurosis that the hero isn't perfect. Well, Miss Fury had this sort of self-doubt. She was very human with limits to her abilities and questioned if she was actually good enough to be a hero. Peter Parker's Spider-Man did the same thing decades later. Both characters would sit there and actually be somewhat despondent of whether what they're doing was actually good enough for society. Both protagonists face also that social awkwardness of when their lovers don't like their secret alter egos. Miss Fury had that with her love interest, and so did Peter Parker with Betty Brant, who hated Spider-Man. They also both had confusion and animosity from police generated from impersonators that appeared to be in the same costume as them. These impersonators would commit crimes and basically frame them, causing the police to go after our heroes. Whether it influenced Stan Lee or not, a lot of the ingredients that make Spidey's early 60s adventures great are present in Tarpe Mills' Miss Fury. There are also some elements of Tarpe Mills' Miss Fury strip that actually advance beyond a lot of the storytelling that we even see from Spider-Man 20 years later. Mainly because of the Comics Code Authority, which limited what comic books were actually able to do. But in the early 40s, Newspaper comic strips got away with quite a bit more because they were basically detailed to a far more adult consumership. Look at this strip where a Nazi sympathizer actually gets branded on the forehead with a burning swastika. And look at this other strip in which General Bruno, who was the Benito Mussolini type character of the strip, shove a screwdriver into another Nazi's eyes for challenging his authority. Also look at the characterization of the villain, General Bruno, who expresses his disillusionment with his leader, Adolf Hitler, as the Nazi regime falls apart during World War II. As much as an awesome pioneer that June Tarpe Mills was in storytelling in the visual sequential medium of comics, it's also noted that she also had her influences. Look at this strip of hers from Miss Fury in 1942, where during wartime, a protagonist gets physical revenge in battle, portraying the exchange of physical force with repetitive images being depicted of a fist in motion as the villain gets his just desserts with the recoil showing similar repeated images. This was actually done already by Milton Kniff in 1939 for Terry and the Pirates which is fine because a lot of the greats inspired one another. 
June Tarpe Mills was certainly ahead of her time with her Miss Fury comic strip, and time has proven that she was a comic tour de force, a force that was picked up by Martin Goodman into reprint comic books that would have visual, sequential, and narrative parameters that would become the everyday utility for storytelling in Marvel two decades later.